This episode of Heroes of the Horn is brought to you by Sir Seth of House Kinsinger, an Oshman of the Black Tower. May the light shine on you. Welcome to Heroes of the Horn, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am Sir Matt. And I am Sir Ezra. Welcome to our Wheel of Time book club. The horn has sounded and we have answered the call. Today we are covering The Great Hunt, chapters 1 through 10. Yeah, as, wow, let me just say, you know, as we continue our journey uh, through the Wheel of Time, you just get sucked in more and more and more to these characters uh what's going on and i mean it's like it, we just ended yeah uh, the, the first book and you're like okay all right we you know rand uh fights balzaman beats mm-hmm. him everything should be good well now we're 10 chapters in here and it's all about to, <laughs> it's all about to, it's all about to change <laughs> everything, everything yeah, it's, has changed it's like everything that they gained right is like almost in the in the first you know several chapters is just like stripped away and we're back to like oh shoot you know what we're gonna do right yeah. right so yeah, but yeah awesome it's all, that's cool so hey uh how, how's it going though how you doing it's good, man. You know, I, like most people, I'm just kind of hanging out at home uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and so just reading and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, being an American hero by laying on my couch and not spreading, uh, you know, coronavirus. So, yeah, I'm doing, doing my part. I like it. I like that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, today I uh, – so – just because it's out, it's outdoors. It actually ends up being. It's been cold the last few days here, but it's been really nice out. This and this weekend's gonna be good. But um, my dad had like a tree fall down in his field uh, like a week or two ago, and so oh, all morning I was over there just trying to. I was literally I was picking up sticks. So I was again it was social distancing out in the field mm-hmm. by myself. Um, but and he had raked up some piles and he was just like, you know, so I'm out there legitimately picking up sticks. And I thought of you because uh, I know it's something we used to do back in the day. Yeah. Pick up <laughs> sticks, man. That's what we did. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I grew up I, I grew up in a pretty rural area. And so we always used to joke that that's what we did because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> so just yeah. picking up sticks out there. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I went for a walk uh, last night and I think it was the first time I've been outside in, you know, like five days. I was like, what is this? Yeah, the air yeah. moves. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, there's, so. there's little critters running around. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. great. yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah, good. So. Um, uh, all right. Well, hey, let's. Uh, we, we, I guess we've got a couple things. You know, there's really not a whole lot in in, in Village Council, but we always kind of, if we have anything about the show, there was like this. Um, another, uh, maybe it's a leaked photo. I don't know. It's 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 uh, Roseman Pike, and it's a picture of her as like Moraine, possibly. And it looked really cool. It was out there on on I uh, found it on Instagram, and it's kind of interesting. What a few since they're on hiatus, um, there's been some, you know, everyone's kind of like whatever phones their pictures they have on your on their phone. If they're if it's approved, they might get leaked. It might whatever. Um, it's just been kind of cool to follow the cast on on their like Instagram stories and see what they're doing. Um, the showrunner uh, uh, Rafe actually did like a Q and A the other day on on uh his instagram so i don't know if that's still up there or not but if you want to and you go follow him rafe uh, rafe judkins uh, did like a q a and sort of um yeah, just answered a lot of questions like he said basically ask me any of your wheel of time questions and i'll i'll answer them i'll give you guys some some insight into the show and uh it was it was pretty cool so i was kind of watching that uh live he was just talking about like you know people were asking are you gonna merge characters together are you going to what's the score gonna be like um what impressed you most when you walked on the set, you know, and a couple of things he said, like the clothing, like what they've done with the clothing, he said, is, is absolutely amazing. And we've seen a few set photos, which look just stunning. Um, mm-hmm. Really, really, really cool. And actually, if you notice, there is a uh, set photo that was out there and the little huts or whatever, um, the roof almost went all the way down to the ground, actually. 
and I was as we were reading the Great Hunt today, I was I was thinking, I think they say in Shinar actually, I know that's that's supposed to be maybe like the two rivers, but they talk about how like the structure of the of the houses and the buildings here and how they almost seem to be like there's more of that protection, I guess, maybe from the elements and that the roof almost like wraps around almost down to the ground, essentially, you know, like, uh, so I thought that was kind of kind of almost like they're tri triangular in shape and then with the with the roof kind of wrapping down. But yeah, I don't know if anybody, you know, sees anything interesting or you guys see some cool stuff about the show that you'd like us to talk about. Uh, send us that, uh, you know, our way here just because, um, you know, kind of interesting to keep up to date on it. And right now they're on hiatus and can't really do much but um still excited it's exciting to know that they're they're working on it they're making progress and and uh yeah it just looks really cool everything every little leak i see uh looks amazing so yeah yeah absolutely and again i mean i'm super excited for it once it does uh you know eventually come out whenever that is uh that is going to be um and now that we're right, getting through some more of these chapters i'm kind of picturing in my mind okay you know with this being such a large book series you know where do we think we're going to go how do we you know what are we going to leave in what are we going to cut out um, you know, stuff like that. How how is it, how is it going to go? Because you know, assuming this is going to be similar to most kind of uh, you know Netflix, uh, you know G Game of Thrones, or you know other other kind of subscription based services where it's probably going to be eight to ten episodes a season. I'm kind of mm -hmm. like, okay, I can kind of see, I can kind of see like what we're reading today. I'm like, I think you could probably knock out this first ten chapters and maybe two episodes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so you're just kind of piecing it in my mind, like, okay, they, you know, they don't need all of this or all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not going to be like, well, we don't know. I mean, it's not like they're going to do a book per season. It seems like yeah, they may, may actually, yeah, it may be like the, like mid season, you know, we may have found the horn of Valir, you know, <laughs> like in season one or something, who knows, like how, yeah. how quickly they're going to kind of, uh, progress through all of that or, or, or whatever. But uh, it's fascinating, fascinating because it's such a it's such a big series. It's not like you're just converting like Lord of the Rings um, over, although Lord of the Rings is thick and you did three great movies with extended edition and they went nuts on that. It's like, man, this, there's even more. There's even more in, in Wheel of Time and so many more characters. It's just it's going to be fascinating. And, and and to see all the different people they've cast as like Aes Sedai, it just it's so cool. It's going to be so diverse and so um inclusive it's just it seems great they're doing they're killing it so yeah and i mean and the characters are it's going to be huge because there's i mean we're going to see what all characters are going to leave in and stuff because as we'll get to today i mean the cast and, and characters of all of these um uh all of these uh i said i and stuff we're going to meet are just it's huge so yeah yeah um, okay, yeah. So now with that, let's let's move on here. We've got uh, we always go over our poll, and to end last book, we actually uh, just per Sir Matt's request, you know, is Moraine a boss? Is she a boss? And uh, overwhelming, um, we had we actually put a few options in. I said yes, she's a boss. We had uh, you know, that was that that was the winner. Uh, I also put in the option just wait. We had a few people say yeah, just wait. It's going to continue to kind of you know she's going to keep leveling up on us, and we're going to be blown away by her. Um, and you got it compared to like Gandalf, which I thought was, which, you know, was was awesome. Right. Like, and this, yeah, that's this, what, that's and even more so as as we get into today, she's reminding me of just just similar right to Gandalf, where it's somebody who seems to know everywhere they go. That, OK, they kind of know stuff and like having yeah. that person around, you feel safe and all and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. And then we had one person list uh, that she was a dark friend. And I thought, wow, that's again, it's got to be Nick. Got to be. Yeah. Oh, so. I'm sure. No, he. I think he actually he he likes, he likes Moraine. So yeah. All right. Well. Um. Okay. So we always do my kind of too long didn't read uh, version. That well, not always, but we just started doing that a couple episodes ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, to kind of just describe my you know when I call as and we get ready to podcast. All right. Here's just kind of my brief summary of, of what what's been going on. So, um. You know, to kind of quickly summarize it, then we'll go into better, more detailed uh, summaries. Basically, I mean, there's a lot, man. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it starts off Rand and uh, Lan are training. Uh, then we start to learn a little bit more just about everyone in those in those first couple of chapters there. We start to get a little bigger. Rand tries to escape. Doesn't really happen. Uh, Nynaeve and Lan just need to get a room already. I mean, <laughs> G many Christmas. I mean, it's like, come on now. I mean, you can cut that tension with a knife. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Put on Fane is there and he should not at all be trusted. 
uh, he, right, right. Uh, Rand goes and he meets with uh, the Aes Sedai. They tell him he's the dragon or born. The horn and Matt's dagger get stolen. And now we got to go. The, the great hunt is on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's it's something. It's it's cool to kind of think about. And again, we, we were kind of like, um, there, there's a lot of chapters in this book. And so we're, we're biting off quite a bit here in the beginning. And then as we get through the rest of this book into parts two, three, and four, um, I start to kind of reduce the chapters and we'll kind of narrow in on some things because some, because they're bigger and we're going to need to take our time on it. But I thought a lot of this intro stuff here in the beginning, um, it's, it's, you know, you, you, you can't ever really say this is important and that's not important or whatever because, and I really can't do that either because um, I think then it kind of, you know, is, is almost spoiler level to, to really say, well, let's hyper focus on this one point or whatever. But I try to kind of, uh, you know, talk about some of those, those um, really interesting points. I think like you today kind of pulled out the Dragon Reborn, you know, the, the Dragon Reborn conversation and, and everything. So, um, yeah, but yeah, let's go through the chapter summaries though real quick and then we can kind of, we'll talk about all that. Okay. Uh, chapter one, the flame of Tarvalin, the Armalan sea arrives in Faldara. Chapter two, the welcome Rand tries to flee, but is told no one is allowed to leave Faldara. Chapter three, friends and enemies. After discovering he cannot leave the keep, uh, and that pot on Fane is having a bad day, Egwene hides Rand in the women's apartments. Not supposed to be there. Uh, chapter four, summoned Moraine speaks with the Aes Sedai who have arrived. Chapter five, the shadow in Shinar. Moraine and Swain talk. Uh, Bornhold heads through uh, Terabon. Uh, Lindaren threatens Amalisa and someone frees Padan Fane. Chapter six, dark prophecy. Shadow spawn attack the keep while Fane escapes with a dagger and the horn of Valir. Chapter 7, Blood Calls to Blood. Matt is healed. Uh, Varen tells Moraine and Swain about the dark prophecy, revealing she has realized Rand is the dragon reborn. <laughs> so that's def definitely going to be doing some focus on that. Chapter 8, The Dragon Reborn. Uh, Swain tells Rand he is the dragon reborn, but that he is free to go his own way. Rand tells her he will not be used. Chapter 9, Leave Takings. The group sets off after the horn. Chapter 10, The Hunt Begins. The group comes across a village uh, where the inhabitants were all murdered. So, um, mm, yeah. Again, we're, we're going to, there's just, there's so much, then this may be the case. Sometimes it's like, eh, there's not really a lot to happen. Sometimes there's a ton that happens. So, this is what my first read, but we're still assuming that everyone has read the chapters. So, we're, yeah. there's no way we're going to be able to cover everything today. So, we're kind of taking away some, some big, some big parts here. And I kind of have it for me, my kind of three big uh, takeaways The Dragon Reborn. Um, Nynaeve and Lan need to get a room already and the horn and the dagger. So, uh, as you know, it starts off and, you know, the last thing that happened in eye of the world, Rand uses the power. Everyone kind of freaks out. It seems like the world's going to end, but then they all end up going to right, you know, fall Dar together. Um, and then we see Rand training at the beginning with uh, Lan. And he and Lan are kind of having a conversation, right? And he's, you know, telling him to focus and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that as, as, he's, yeah. as he's training with the sword. Um, you know, Lan certainly can't help him with everything. But, you know, maybe Lan's just kind of like, I, I think I, the way that, that training session kind of came across to me just is that uh, Lan's like, well, I can help you with this to prepare you for stuff yeah. things that may happen later and so i just liked that and that's kind of just what i took away from it i'm um you know lan just yeah. uh it's just great it's just his character the, this the, he's just doing what he can i'm just i'm really really starting to like lan yeah yeah <laughs> lan well, a lot more yeah and can I, can I jump in real quick i just want you know yeah. he, like lan is is to me it's almost like he's he realizes he knows what's going on with rand and he's frustrated um, he's, he, he'll even say to him at one point, you know, like, like you want to leave, but yet you're here. So while you're here twiddling your thumbs, let's put a sword in your hand and let's actually, you know, get you moving, get that energy out, you know, uh, kind of work through some of this. And I think land turns to really what has helped him focus. And it's very similar to what Tam, you know, does in, in helping him sort of, uh, summon the void and, and to really channel, you know, kind of like focus on the flame and, and everything and so it's, it's it's really it's really neat actually and just one thing i want to mention 
So I, I mentioned this in part one of, of the Eye of the World, the wind that 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 comes through and down into the two rivers. You look at the, how this this the wind that starts in this chapter is very different, um, right? And and where it rustled from some old tomb and some the, the, the darkness surrounding it, and how it pushed Rand into Land's you know sword, even though it's a training sword. So a lot of crazy weird stuff happening up there by the blight. But you're right, Land is just like in an uncharacteristic way, taking almost more interest in Rand than maybe he he, he would if this were a, a normal mission or whatever with, with uh, Moraine Sedai. So yeah, why is that? Yeah, and then he and then and then he has this conversation, right, where, about with Lan about if I were to leave, right? You know, if yeah. he's like I, I can't get away from them. Can I? I think is is, you know, something something he says. Uh, and you know, Lan's asking if that's what he really, you know, wants to do. Right. Is, mm-hmm. is that, yeah. is that and then it kind of turns to Egwene and then I th- uh, the, I think he talks about, you know, your friends and all, all of this stuff. And I think it Rand's just scared. He doesn't know what's he doesn't right. he doesn't know what what's going on. And that's really him for the first couple chapters is you know, trying to yeah. escape. You know, I'm, I don't I'm not going to be a puppet. I'm not going to do all of this stuff. And then everything uh, kind of changed. So maybe we'll just kind of focus a little bit here on Rand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, the, and just his his kind of arc through this and then we can get to some of the other people. Yeah. Um, so everything really kind of changes for me. My big takeaway is when you get to chapters uh, seven and eight, right? When we we start to learn about the Dragon Reborn prophecy, who he is, um, you know, some of the tellings of of, of the wheel and and the pattern that um, uh, Moraine talks about a little bit. Uh, some of the prophecies and Rand, I think, is coming to terms with it a little bit, still not believing it. Um, thinking he, you know, thinking they maybe they're wrong. Maybe that maybe he's he does he doesn't want to be their their false dragon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, thinking like maybe they're just they're telling him. But then you know, I think as as you're starting to piece it all together, you're starting again learning more about Rand. There's something about him, uh, and and that's kind of and then we you know we end up we end up we end up leaving. But I to me that's kind of like the bigger the big yeah. takeaway from this first this first ten chapters. Um. Right. So just I, just a couple a couple passages I have here. So this is uh, in chapter eight, the dragon reborn when um, Moraine is talking to Rand. I told you the truth, Rand, Moraine said. She sounded as if they were having a pleasant conversation. Those who could teach you the male Aes Sedai are 3000 years dead. No Aes Sedai living can teach you to touch Sidene any more than you could te- than you could learn to touch Sidar. A bird cannot teach a fish to fly, nor a fish to teach a bird to swim. I have always thought that was a very bad saying. Uh, Varen said suddenly, there are birds that dive and swim, and in the sea of storms are fish that fly with long fins and stretch out as wide as your outstretched arms and break like swords that can pierce. Her words trailed off and <laughs> as she became flustered. Moraine and the Armalan Sea were staring at her without expression. So, you know, and then her hand took the interruption to try and regain some control of himself. As Tam had taught him long ago, he formed a single flame in his mind and fed his fears into it seeking emptiness and the stillness of the void the flame seemed to grow until it enveloped everything until it was too large to control or imagine how longer uh with that um with that it was gone leaving in this place a sense of peace so you know it's just i it's rand there he goes there's a lot this this chapter is like an emo- emotional roller coaster for rand as well as an emotional roller coaster for the reader learning oh man mm-hmm. so the yeah. whole the whole even the whole idea of the dragon reborn and what the dragon is is really now what we're starting to learn in this chapter yeah exactly and and really it's something that um so if we're just talking about you know the the dragon reborn uh, as a whole, as you focus on what Rand's going through, um, Suan, uh, the Amarlin, you know, seat, uh, and and Moraine have been having sort of that that you know under uh, kind of on the side conversation behind Rand's back. I mean, they meet with him first, right, and then eventually, as you're as you're seeing here, Suan tells Rand that he is the Dragon Reborn. But first, you know, she has to she and she's talking to Moraine about it, and I just think it's it's fascinating. One of the things that Moraine says is. Um, gosh, I guess, so it's, it's, Suan is kind of saying, uh, y- you know, like she was, she's thinking about Loghain actually, and him being a false dragon. And she was like, what if he was the one, you know, what if, what if Loghain was the one and we, and, and we, and we've gentled him and Moraine says something interesting. She says the pattern requires, you know, um, the dragon reborn, not a dragon, 
you know it's so it's it's it, it really what she's saying is this is the dragon reborn there is no if and Other. this that it just is this is it and, and once you see that and once you sort of say i can't control that aspect he is the taviran that's been woven out and he is the dragon reborn and that's sort of what moraine believes and whereas like they've been looking you know so each one who kind of each false dragon who shows up you're kind of thinking okay does this person can they do it because the two before Loghain couldn't channel and then Loghain can channel and so they start to think that's where Suan sort of like oh no did we did, did we mess up here and it's like no we wouldn't have been able to do that so like if we right. gentled one of them then then really um that wasn't the dragon it couldn't have been you know like like the dragon is meant to be there you know for the last battle I mean so so if you've already done something to to someone else I mean you know, it gets a little more complex later on if you could sort of everything that the Aes Sedai do learn about what they can do with the power and everything. But like, like for the most part, it's like, yeah, like this has to be it. And so Maureen's trying to get her to understand that. And what's really cool, too, is that you said where it kind of gets a little bit confusing is all the dynamics between like the red Aja and the blue Aja and the green Aja. And right. it's just like, you know, why are the greens now, you know, backing the reds? And it's all about the Omerlin seat that we see now is she's a blue and Moraine is a blue and they were childhood friends and she's been letting Moraine go do her own thing for, for far too long. And Moraine is like, I found him, <laughs> you know, like yeah. th th this, is the, this is the dragon. And, and so they have to really come to an agreement, I guess. And, and she has to see that really for herself. And what's actually cool about Suan is that she has a talent where in which she can see Taviran which I thought was fascinating. That, that's really cool, right? She actually, when she looks at him in the courtyard, when she co comes into Faldara, realizes that was a Taviran, and he had more power surrounding him, you know, than uh, than anything she had seen, you know, previous or, or whatever, you know, more than Arter, Arter Hawkwing and stuff. So, yeah, man. So, so yeah, then as you say, like in this chapter, you know, in chapter eight, where he's focused on, like, he's learning that he is not just a man who can channel, See, that was what he kind of thought that he was before. Um, and now it's more than that. It's like, no, no, no. You, you're the man. You are the one. <laughs> like, to be told that is, I think, just just next level, you know? And it's a lot for him to, to handle. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, abso yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, this, I mean, and then, you know, it's also, I think, it all, Rand's kind of defiance and, and energy um uh -huh. to them also like sets them back a little bit and maybe i think causes them to start to realize oh he might be something else right or he might he might be it right so uh this i have some some more lines here just again this is from that chapter eight mm -hmm. um uh you know she says like when when after after ran kind of says that he you know um he says why are you talking like this mother you know you should you should uh, be gentling me, he asked. He says, uh, did Lan teach him this? No, mother. He had heard it. Um, he had it from Tam Thor. Why? Rand demanded again. The armament seat looked straight at him in the eye. Because you are the dragon reborn. The void rocked. The world rocked. Everything seemed to spin around him. He concentrated on nothing, and the emptiness returned. He says, no, mother. I can channel, but like, help me. I am not uh, Roland Darkspain, nor um, uh, go I I, I are, um, I'm a Leeson, uh, nor a Urane Stonebow. You can gentle me or kill me or let me go, but I will not be a tame false dragon on a Tarvalin leash. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he heard Farron gas and the Armalin's eyes white, probably because nobody <laughs> talks to them like that, right? Y you yeah, know? right. Like yeah. Early, earlier, earlier when Rand's <laughs> in the apartments and they're freaking out and they're like, they keep calling him Lord Rand, which is just funny, right? And like yeah, Wayne yeah. almost gets like upset by it, like, oh my god, he's not a lord, you know, like, right, right. And they're like, but, they're like, but like, he shouldn't have a sword in here. I mean, what's he thinking? And you know, all this right. stuff, like, um, you know, uh, anyway, uh, it did not affect him. It slid off the void with him. Where did you hear those names? The Ar Armalin demanded. Who told you Tarvalin pulls the lines on any false dragon? Um, a friend, mother, he said. A gleeman. His name was Tom Marilyn. Let's go. Let's All go. Right. <laughs> Let's yep. Go. Yep. He's yeah. He's dead now. Uh, Moraine made a sound, um, and he glanced at her. She claimed Tom was not dead, but she had never offered any proof and could not see how any man could survive grappling hand to hand with a fade. Though uh, the thought was um, 
extraneous and it faded away there was only the void and the oneness now you are not the false dragon the armalin said firmly you are the true dragon reborn i am a shepherd from the two rivers mother daughter tell him the story a true story boy listen well so then so again so rand kind of defiant mm-hmm. there right mm-hmm and this is where everything kind of changes, right? When we realize, oh, Rand isn't just a Tavira, and Rand is something far, right. far more. Um, and so then they, they go on the whole, you know, the whole story and all, all, all the history. Um, you know, they came over the Dragon Wall like a flood all the way to the Shining Walls, um, you know, and we're, and, we're, and we're hearing all of these stories, right? Some of them, you know, that Tam uh, told him. Um, you know, and, and, and some of these things. And then uh, she's, they kind of start to piece it together, right? Um, you know, slope of the mountain, heard a baby cry, gave birth there alone before she died. Child blew with the cold. Rand tried to force Tam's voice away. The void grew smaller. A fever dream, he gasped. I couldn't leave a child. I was born in the two rivers, right? And this is Rand hearing the voice and also saying things, right? Or, mm-hmm. or at least yeah. thinking things. Um, always knew you wanted children, Kari. Then back to Rand, he pulls his eyes away from the armillon gaze. He tried to force the void to hold. He knew that that was that and that was not the way, but it was collapsing in him. Uh, back to the yes, last Rand is a good name, it's, you know. And then Rand, I am Rand Al Thor. His legs trembled, and so we knew the dragon was reborn. Moraine went on, yeah, and so it just you know the armillon swore us to secrecy. You know, you know, and all of these things then you know they start to talk about some of these things right uh, the legend right there was uh there was one there were others but there are many places where the old blood descended from the age of legends remains strong then in the two rivers where the old blood of manetherin seethes like uh still like a river in a flood in edmund's field i found three boys whose names day were within weeks of the battle right at dragon mount where you know when they, mm-hmm. the child the child was taken and one of them can channel do you think the trollocs came after you just because you are to you are the dragon reborn and then rand's going through all of this as they're telling him he's like dropping to his knees and you know i mean there's it's like there's a lot of stuff going on and they they start talking about the prophecy and everything that kind of ties into it right uh you know the last battle is coming and you were born to unite mankind and lead them against the dark one Rand says, you know, I've defeated Balzaman. Uh, If you believe that, you are as much a fool as the Damani. Many there believe he is dead or say they do, but I notice they still won't risk naming him. Right. You know, it's your (laughs) destiny, you know, all of this stuff. So it's just going on and on and it's a lot. Um, But it's, it's huge because it's. It changes everything, right? You know, who you truly are. Just some of these lines that you, you pull out of this, this chapter. The dragon reborn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that whole bit is really interesting. And, you know, it's it's like, so they start to tell him, I mean, really, it's like, why did Moraine go to that village? And it's because she's been looking at the prophecies. She's looking for the one who was maybe born, you know, um, on Dragon Mount, born of, the, you know, uh, raised by the old blood and the old blood being that of Manetherin. And, you know, so she's going back to these different places, and that's when she gets, you know, she goes there for her investigation. So they're kind of saying, almost like laying down the proof, like, here is not, we didn't just say you're the Dragon Reborn, like, we've done years of research, and we have tried to figure out, you know, when the Dragon, like, look at the signs, and when will the time of the Dragon, you know, be, and th- th- you can almost kind of see it, because there were so many Uh, false dragons proclaiming themselves and what's really interesting is that around this time so they're saying they're pointing to this boy randall thor and they're saying you are the dragon reborn but he is not saying it he keeps saying i am rand al thor and so suan and moraine have a conversation later where they're like you know that at this point in time three more dragons have come forth in the land um, and you've got different wars kind of happening around the, the, you know, the continent where people are coming forward. They're proclaiming that they are the dragon. And, and she kind of says, until the true dragon proclaims himself, others will come forward. Why? Because the pattern is demanding, you know, like that the dragon reborn come forward. Like the time of his coming, it's almost like you would have these false dragons before leading to the one true dragon. So uh, until he actually proclaims himself dragon reborn, then 
others will still, you know, people don't know who to flock to. They, they're they going to, you know, if the dragon's supposed to be there at the at the last battle and, and defeat the Dark One, well, then we're going to flock to this guy because he's, he's saying he's the Dragon Reborn and he can channel and he can do these things. So people are looking for that. And Rand just is, it's like, he, it's like a, he's a, he's a young man running from his destiny and they, they don't want to, and you can't force the dragon. You can't, like the, like Moraine sort of says to Suan, like the reason she didn't talk to him for that whole time. And Lan said, you know, Moraine hasn't talked to you, you know, like you've been free to leave for, for months, she mm-hmm. her. Why are you still here? And he, he doesn't really know why. Um, Moraine has not talked to him at all. And he's like, all right, fine, I'll say it. You know, Moraine had all this stuff to say, you know, like basically in the first book. And she said nothing to me, nothing. Like he's like, what's going on? Like, why isn't, why, why did she stop? Why the behavior change? Why is she kind of like pretending that all the stuff that she saw and witnessed with Rand doesn't really matter? She's kind of letting him do his own thing. And what's, you know, even more fascinating is that, is that, you know, the Omerlin seat actually comes to Faldara and Moraine wasn't going to take him to Tarvalin. I mean, like that's, you kind of get that indication. Like she's shocked that the Omerlin seat is here and it's, it's interesting. It's actually the Aes Sedai who they came across in Camelin who goes and says that she had sort of a, a, a foretelling that this boy that was traveling with Moraine had this great power. And you're like, Oh shoot. So it, it's, it's just, you kind of wonder what Moraine really uh, was, was going to do. She's really letting him make his own decision but yet she will she knows what he needs to do and will be there when he gets close enough to where she can just it's almost like you're trying to inch somebody closer and closer to this door that they need to go through and once you once they finally get real you know close to it well i'm just going to boom i'm going to knock you right on through there you go i got you all lined up where i want you but i didn't you know if if i start pushing you 10 feet away well there's plenty of room for you to kind of maneuver and get away from me but if i let you just on your own and i watch you and i wait until you get close to that door then i'm going to strike and that's sort of what i think moraine is is doing so okay so question for you so yeah. you know it, they talk about they're, they're figuring out who these kids are and, and or all the all these people are um and so i don't remember it does it or does it directly say or have we learned at this point why she shows up at edmund's field when she does or is it just by chance no yeah i mean they, they kind of talk about that and that's actually so we didn't cover the first book um, you know, like the, 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 the prequel book, but a lot of that oh, okay. is, is, is discovered in, in, in that and, in, in stuff. So like they hint at like, again, her, her, uh, looking at the prophecies and stuff. What's that? And, what's that? The, 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 the prequel book is a new spring, right? Yes. I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, yep. I had to look back behind me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one that we'll, we'll cover more and it's, it's pretty neat just to sort of like, man, how did she, what, what all did she have to go through? To kind of find these boys and and stuff and remember, um, we learned that Pot on Fane, you know, is is also been a hound of the Dark One, and he's been searching as well. So it's been this 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 kind of this um, uh, race against time, if you will, uh, to to make sure that you like that that she, that Moraine or one of the members of the Aes Sedai that the, that they interact with the Dragon Reborn first. And what's what's really crazy too is, is that like. Moraine and Suan don't really trust the Red Aja, even though that's their task is to gentle these false dragons and and to confront these these men who can channel and that's their whole thing, uh, uh, you know, and, and and what have you. It's like you almost want to you you, you kind of wonder what do they think? Do they do they even believe in the Dragon Reborn? Do, do, it's almost like maybe they do, but yet they just don't ever want that ending to come because of all the pain and the suffering and the and and the breaking of their you know order or the way of life that it'll change things so people are resistant to that but it's it's really interesting that that the blues are very much in tune with with finding the the dragon and i mean suan's even worried that maybe they gentled low gain and they shouldn't have and that's not a a concern that the reds have at all so yeah i don't know okay yeah okay so 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 we don't we don't really i guess we don't we so we don't know without reading that other book why it is that she shows up there at the same time and then why like, like is it just i'm just wondering is it like coincidence that the trollocs show up at the same time or i mean is that just something we're not supposed to know yet well no i mean i think i mean pot on fane you know basically like he had been going there multiple 
you know, times and they had gotten to so know he's him. So fa- he's figuring it out at the same he's, time. He's been a dark friend for a long time. Yeah. Right. And, and so, you know, yeah, that's why I say it was really, it was a competition. And, and really it's sort of like they, they didn't know. I mean, that like it was, Pot on Fane did not know yet who it was that he was supposed to, like that last trip there. I kind of feel like, or maybe even just before that, I'd have to go back and, and refresh my memory. But yeah, he alerts. I mean, he is he's the reason. He's one of the reasons why uh, the Trollocs are able to to enter the two rivers. And you and they go into like how the Trollocs get there. Um, there's a, there's a special way in which they, you know, uh, were and maybe, I can't remember if that was covered or not. But like the, there's a there's a reason why no other nation noticed that the Trollocs showed up in in, in Emmons Field. And it's almost like why you can almost dismiss it and say what that doesn't even make sense. You know, mm-hmm. like 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 everyone would have seen them, but there are special there are special ways in which they which they got there. So, OK. Um, All right. Yeah. Awesome. OK, well, uh, let's move on. So actually later in this chapter. So there, there's a little bit more about it before, but I want to just uh, shift to uh, point number two here. Right. Which is Nynaeve and Lan need to get a room already. OK, so yeah. <laughs> then even Lan, excuse me. Um, so. Uh, one of the you know the big thing is you know when it when it left you know in the, in the first book right their relationship is just getting it's getting more and more intriguing because it starts off and she's almost annoyed with him with Lan uh, you mm-hmm. know like oh he's always there he's always with her you know she's always he's kind of annoying and then wow out of nowhere kind of like okay maybe they have some like feelings for each other and then the whole well. I, um, you know, she might, be, she might become a die. So if she if she's an Aes die, you know, they can't be together. And then he's got his relationship with uh, Moraine being a warder. And so, uh, you know, one of the things that happens here, man, is he gives her his ring. Big deal. The the mm-hmm. like the ring that's yeah. the, the signet of you know who he is. He, you know, he's supposed to, he's a king, right? Given up his given and not really uh, taken his seat, but he gives it to her. So that she could use it later. Yeah. And, and actually, um, it's it's earlier um, when Lan is talking to Rand, too. He kind of says, like, it's it's the love of Egwene uh, for, for Rand and the love of his friends that has kept him there. He doesn't I mean he wants to leave, too. It's, it's also the reason why he wants to leave. Uh, and then he's frustrated mm-hmm. with with Moraine. But you're right. It's sort of like and Lan says love makes a man do crazy things. You know, it, it causes him to do um, it, it gets to you. And so you can tell that like, Lan is is doing things. Um, you know, remember the dilemma he had? Does he does he protect Nynaeve or or Moraine because he's in love with Nynaeve? You know, mm-hmm. and and that was that was and and actually I have a let me go back here real quick. Um, the, this is just a comment from Lady Heather Reed who kind of talks about the idea the, these clues uh, about about different love interests. So I just want to read this real quick. You know, um, just she thanked us for another episode. Uh, one thing that I absolutely love about this series is that it doesn't matter how many times you read it, I always walk away with something new. For instance, this time I walked away with a better understanding of a couple characters whose relationships uh, always seem to jump out at me much later in the series. This time, though, I picked up on a few little clues early on that I never had before that made their relationships click into place. And she's actually, she says, I'm not talking about Lan and Nynaeve either, although I've heard some people say their relationship seems to fall out of the sky. The clues are there if you look back. And Sir David, you know, kind of went along to, to agree with that in that, like, it did feel to me that um, this, in this, and this is his first read, this first reading, that it suddenly came up to the forefront, or at least um, more had happened when the chapters focused when the, when the chapter's focus was on them. So he's just kind of saying like, it did almost feel like they, they, they did, he didn't really see it coming. But then as you do comb back through that, through it, through another reread, because I like Heather uh, actually was like, Oh, well, I, I see the tension. You know, you see that it's, it's more of the tension right. between the two um, that you're sort of like, okay, I can, I, I it's in my Neve's nature uh, causes you to not really see it as, as much, in the night, well, and then land even being very quiet and silent. It's something that I think on TV will be a lot easier to see and pick up on, mm-hmm. versus in in book form because of we're not used to those type of, you know, those are those, those people. I guess I don't know. It's just they're they're not easy to read, uh, if you will. Right. So, yeah, and I gotta say, you know, naive, um, you know, in this, it, uh, it's not. She doesn't really get lost in in these in these chapters but she just she's not focused on as much and i'm, I'm assuming that you know as we 
as we progress and the book opens up and you get way and way more POV characters because um, I don't remember this happening in the last book, but in this book, I noticed there's, there's chapters where like this, the chapter eight, for example, where it's almost like, uh, you know, you finish up all the rant stuff and it immediately goes to naive. It's like a big thing, you know, like a big break. And yeah. if you're reading, look at the pages, it's like that. It almost should just be an, it's a, it's own chapter, but I guess that's just maybe his writing style or something. Um, so it's almost like a chapter inside of a chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Different points. Um, of view. But yeah. I, yeah, exactly. But so like Nynaeve, um, this is really where I feel like you really start to get and see what's going on with her um, is she's kind of struggling here a little bit with some of these Aes Sedai, right? You know, she's she's like, I'm the wisdom of Edmund's field. And they're like, well, then why aren't you there? Right. You know, like you're how are how are you how are you protecting them if you're not there? And so, you you know, you, you think about obviously Rand has tons of struggles going on because he's mm-hmm. um you know the dragon are born and you know all, all this all this stuff we're talking like high level stuff but uh Nynaeve has got a lot of struggles too both with you know kind of her her wanting to have this relationship with Lan and then also um you know am I going to become an Aes Sedai the wisdom as in field she still feels responsible for all of this as if you know like she um and also kind of like disrespect like nobody really respects her even though she should be because she also can channel and she also um, you know, as an important person. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Well, and 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 she's as you say, Lan was kind of challenging her. Um, and and ju- just in that, like things are are bigger than now than just you being a wisdom, and like it's it's sort of like giving up some of your your control. I mean, still being protective, but playing your role. And and she's she tells Egwene later not to call her a wisdom anymore. Um, mm-hmm. because they're going to Tarvalin, they're going to, to learn. And at one point they did kind of talk about the, well, either, either it's coming up or they did talk about it where, um, Egwene is going to go in as a novice and, uh, Nynaeve being like an accepted and going in at that, that upper level, really bypassing those novice years and, and really just being raised there. And she'll have a few things that she has to do, uh, later on, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the main focus here has been Rand and his his dilemma, what you're going to do, and then Nynaeve trying to uh, comfort Egwene a little bit, um, prep for all this, because it's abrupt. It's a big change. Like, now people are are splitting off in directions, and, like, before in the first book, Nynaeve was very worried about, like, I mean, she was was really split when Perrin went north with Elias and Matt, and and Rand went on to Camelon uh, through Whitebridge and everything. Like, she really didn't know what to do. She, she did, wasn't willing to give to, to go one way or the other. And it's almost like she gets stuck by not going in any direction. And that's where Moraine sort of says, you know, we have to do what we can. And I know where this boy is. So let's go pursue him. Um, and then we'll get back to the other. So they at naive starting to kind of understand, like, I, I can't control everything. The wheel weaves as the wheel wills. And so she's kind of got to give into that a little bit. Um, but yeah, she, yeah, she's a little cold yeah. with land there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, uh, and just real quick, just one last uh, before we kind of get to her and Lan. Um, just uh, this line, chapter eight, light. What the, uh, you know, when they say when they ask, is is he really? You know, they're talking about Rand. Uh, they're like, is he really? A, is he really a prince in your land? Is he just like? Cause, you know, they keep calling him Lord Rand and stuff yeah. like that. And yeah. People are kind of getting annoyed with it. It's like, you know, what have they done to him? I should have gotten him away from Moraine somehow. The light blind her. I'm his wisdom, right? You know, like she does still feel this responsibility over them and and i almost feel bad for her because everything's happening too fast for her to really have any sort of say in the matter mm-hmm. um, yeah. because she doesn't really know a lot of things outside of of edmund's field right yeah yeah exactly yeah it, it, it's a lot of learning um another cool thing to mention is that uh they talk about um earlier i just since we we're talking about you know elaine or i'm sorry um Egwene and Nynaeve, one thing, one of the one of those first conversations that Suan has with Moraine is that they're they're worried about the power. You get a little bit of the insight on the power struggle, and th- this ties into Nynaeve, So I'm, I'm this is why I'm going this direction here. Um, she like refers to well, I, I, it's Suan who refers to the Reds, the Red Aja acquiring Elaine Trakan, who was from Camelin. She's the daughter heir. And she's been traveling, you know, up to Tarvalin with her brother. That's who Rand kind of ran into, that girl that he runs into in the courtyard back in Camelin, the little princess. And she's extremely powerful, like extremely powerful. And and they sense much potential in her. And when an Aja finds one of those individuals, it kind of gives that 
that that Aja like weight like they it's, it's almost like a point I think you think of it like Harry Potter house points I don't know <laughs> like I mean they get some score for that I guess if you will it, is, it carries influence well Moraine has now brought Nynaeve and Egwene that's sort of why she was very much like like finding girls that can channel and that can channel to this level it's just not been seen in in so long and they're so young and haven't even been trained but yet their power is is immense and that that she senses this great potential so that's a win for the blues and it's it's kind of cool uh just to sort of see Nynaeve is in she, she's intrigued by all of this and I think since she does feel that responsibility for Rand and the others she can do more and almost like she can protect them from the Aes Sedai or be more involved if she is an Aes Sedai, really, is, is the way I kind of think about it a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. And uh, here I have I have the uh, just kind of her her pulled up her stuff with Lan uh, pulled up here. Um, so as she's as she's just kind of thinking about him, right? She's like, he's too tall for one thing and old enough to be my father. Uh, a man with a face like that would have to be cruel. No, he's not like that. Never that. And he was a king. His land was destroyed when he was a child, and he would not claim a crown, but he was a king for that. What would a king want with a village woman? He's a warder, too, bonded to Moraine. She has his loyalty to death uh, and ties closer than any lover, and she has him. She has everything I want. The light burn her. All right. And so, you know, it's just it's just that, that inner struggle. I just like uh, Nynaeve and, and Lan. Right. And just how it goes on. And then he gives her uh, his ring, obviously, um, which is just kind of it's just sad because you think like, oh, maybe we're going to go in different directions and, and, and stuff like that. And so you think I just think about some of these characters, uh, and you know, that like at some point they're all going to get split up and just thinking like, you know. Rand and Egwene, like a great Egwene kind of, you know, maybe says I love you right before they leave mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just like, ah, oh, it's heartbreaking, man. All these characters going off in different directions. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, I know. I know. Pr- pretty wild. Yeah. And I, I think, um, yeah, I know. And that, that whole story is going to, you're, you're, you're going to absolutely love what happens to Nynaeve and in land. It is just, it's next level. It's so cool. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I can say. Um, now, so so, do you want to switch to maybe like the the uh, horn and and the dagger, a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and for that, I think we have to back um, up a little bit just to like we do you know, chapter six. Some I of think. the early. Yeah. Well, I I would say maybe even just a little earlier. Uh, chapter five, right, is where they decide. Um, you know, Marine suggest that's when Marine suggests uh, that they should send Matt and Perrin uh, to carry the horn, right, mm-hmm. of of Valir to Ilion. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, you know, she, um, and, but then also that, that Matt, there's a problem that Matt's carrying the dagger from Shadow Logoth. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a they, problem. Then they, <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of a problem with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, so this is when they decide to heal. Uh, they, they decide to attempt to heal Matt and Faldara instead of taking him to Tarvalin. Um, and then they kind of go back to the horn uh, of Ilion talking about it a little bit and that they decide that um, that Rand will eagerly take any chance that we get from the Aes Sedai uh, and that he will most likely want to accompany his friends. Uh, and then they talk a little bit short while about how Ilion will follow whoever bears the horn of Valir. Yeah. And so then that leads us into chapter six. So that's just kind of how chap- chapter five is uh, kind of starts. that. Y- yeah. And I guess while we're right there, I, just a thought that occurred to me is one of the things and I think it's very important to kind of understand how all this works is Moraine emphasizes that if, as you say, it's almost like they're, like, he, she, she believes that these Taviran are tied closely together, and that if we send the two boys who are Taviran, his two friends, with the horn down down there, and they're about to, they've already called, as we heard in the first book, the, the call has been at, went, went out for the great hunt of the horn, and you're going to have these new heroes, hopefully. Um, if, if we do that, and it's, and it's that, if they show up as if they were hunters and Hey, we found it. And people are like, Holy, you know, Holy cow. Uh, and then, and yeah. then Rand is sort of, he's then closer to that door. That's one of those things that, that the dragon would need to do and would need to go through that door. And so she then has him super close to where she can push him through. Now they, I think Suan says, you know, what if he still will not proclaim himself dragon reborn? What if he just chooses and he's defiant and he, and he, and he, and he will not do it. Um, and that's where Moraine says that she has another way in which she can make it to to where like like when the horn is presented that if she's nearby and she has certain things in her possession um, or maybe Rand does later on that she can pull out and basically show everyone he is the dragon 
you know, reborn. And I, I think we already saw it, right? I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm blanking right now, but you saw the, the dragon banner, right? Wasn't that in the first? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's also in the chest. And so that's one of those things that it's, it's another indicator that this is the dragon reborn. And if I pull this out and wave it over top of his head, like, okay, now even though you're not proclaiming yourself to be dragon reborn, others will, you know, well, others will join yeah. me in that regard. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's go to, uh, so chapter six, right? Uh, that's where we start to learn a little bit more about the uh, the horn, right? And the dagger. So that's the chapter where Balsamon's hunt is, where Rand's having a bad dream again, yes. right? Uh, yep. With, with Bal yeah, with with, with Balsamon. Um, and then uh, later, right, in, in, in that chapter is where, you know, it's discovered that Padon Fane is missing and is Matt's dagger mm -hmm. and the horn of Valier as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a couple pretty pretty important things um, are are missing, and so the alarm kind of goes off, right? And people are rushing around, and there's the, there's a, there's a small fight uh, that that we that we kind of see between like Trollocs and and, and a Merdral. Um You get the Shannaran out there like doing their thing. Uh, it, gosh, and I, I love too the different names that that are you know they also call like a Merdral the Eyeless, those without eyes. And you remember the rule in, in Shinar is you have lamplighters. I thought this was kind of fascinating. It's just like the world building, right? Like you can see in the TV show how they have these people who would maybe go through and it was their job to keep the lamps lit. Why? Because they're so close to the blight and they do not want a murdraw. They do not want a fade. One of the eyeless, you know, one of the, like walking through uh, the shadows. And that's why you can't wear a hood. So it's just like, how does this happen? Right. Um, but yeah, one of those is able to kind of get in and, and uh, they have this fight. Uh, Inktar takes him on himself. And remember, I, I think I told you, Inktar is one of my uh, favorite, favorite, characters. Ca favorite characters. Yeah, one of my absolute favorites. But um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty epic. And, and as you say, like they broke Pot on Fane out. And uh, yeah, the horn is gone. The dagger is gone. Yeah, and that's going to be probably the the... I mean, just look, you know, projecting ahead, probably that, that that's what this whole book is going to be about is them chasing him down mm -hmm. is, you know, it's just my guess. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's called the Great Hunt. Right. And, you know, right. As you said, you know, as I was thinking, about, I was like, well, they, you know, the hunt for the horn. Well, they've already got it. Well, now. OK, I get it. Now I get what you're saying. You know, yeah. sometimes as 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 tells me some things that really trying to spoil. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Then you get there like, oh, OK, I get it now. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and so, yeah, the, like the hunt. Yeah. Now will begin. Right. Um, but something interesting. And we're going to cover maybe more of this in the extended edition. Um, Pot on Fane and, and and really what's going on at, at Toman Head and all of the hinting with the Damani and different things that have been scattered throughout this uh, these first 10 chapters. But when Rand gets there, like when they finally get down to the cells to sort of check on, you know, Pot on Fane or whatever, they see all of that. um that trollic like writing right on the right. on the walls like written in blood and stuff and rand is like found by leandrin one of the red aja who is just an absolute i mean fr from the get-go you just don't like her i mean she's just mean and just you know nasty but you know um she's meant to be that but it's, it's not all the reds are like that that's just sort of her character um and she sees rand like in there like erasing stuff uh, Pot on Fane keeps saying that, like, you know, the, the things that he says, he, it, Rand thinks he's mad and he's crazy earlier when he's down there with Egwene and they're, they're seeing him in his prison and stuff. And it's like he keeps hinting that he's going to to face him again, and that their that their paths or their destinies are kind of intertwined in some you know weird way. And so Rand, when he sees what's written on the wall, um, you know, he, he's all, he's like over there trying to like erase it and stuff. And it makes it look like you know, that's that he was trying to cover something up. Um, yeah. And then Varen Sedai, one of the Browns goes in and starts to kind of interpret and study um, the Trolloc script and, and describes it as interesting. Um, and, and she's going to take some notes on it. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, man. Um, and, uh, and then the horn, you know, the, the horn, the horn being gone, too i just wanted there's something i want to quickly want to talk about that so and and again also trying to project forward here so theoretically right we could enter a situation in which padan fane goes to ilion with the horn and says <laughs> i've got it yes we could we could yeah. yeah 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 i mean right i mean so because um 
yeah, this is great. Let me let me skip on down here. So we end up um, in in chapter ten. Okay, so we kind of cover like those two things have been taken. So now I think then you bounce back right. to chapters nine and ten. Oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah, and these leave takings, and as you say, they're they're going through the courtyard, saying their goodbyes, packing stuff up. Um, and and, and one thing we need to mention just for the dynamic of all of this is that. Early on in these first 10 chapters, Rand saw Matt dicing, which is going to be a common thing. He's always, you know, tossing the dice and he's mm-hmm. with Perrin and he sees Loyal and he's contemplating. This is when he's trying to run away on his own and he insults them and all that kind of stuff. So there's a yeah. little bit of a divide between those the, those two are th- those. Yeah, groups. I mean, yeah. It- yeah, and again, I think I think it's it's uh, I kind of took his insulting them almost as like you know it's kind of like you know you look at those old movies right where you're trying to tell a dog to yeah. you know go away or so, go away or something because you can't take it with you and so you're mean to it right. so it makes it easier for him to leave. that's what I totally it's, took yeah it's, that it's what as. Arya does to Nymeria you know in Game of Thrones in Game of Thrones yeah. exactly yeah exactly yeah. And, and what somebody does to Lassie or something right. you know, <laughs> the, I, I don't know I haven't seen it but I'm just <laughs> you watch it every day don't <laughs> yeah. Um, but remember how you said like loyal was kind of growing on you, um, and that you that you really yeah liked oh absolutely yeah. yeah it's like you know when when he's insulted by you know Rand tells him to to go and stick to his books and he insults his like you know um, like gardens and stuff and and what have you like loyal again is just is sort of like okay if that's what you want he's very formal and he leaves but it's like later on he's he, he starts to think about it more because they're very patient and and uh, you know kind of slower moving if you will um very 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 sharp though very very intelligent and he realizes they're they're taviran taviran are so interesting this is being done for a reason these are taviran arguing why like there's more to it um and so anyways that's the sort of the dynamic and when you come back to like chapter nine leave takings uh and, and they're in the courtyard and they're trying to decide what to do rand has he still has this choice he he now Instead of like, so now Suan and Moraine, who said like, yeah, we're gonna make the boys carry the horn down to 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 Ilion, uh, and Rand will go with them. No, now it's like it's it's we have to recapture the horn, and more importantly, that dagger needs to be if it's separated from Matt too long, he may die. And so, for for a true healing and a separation to take place, they needed to take him to you know Tarvalin. Uh, so he has to get that dagger back for his friend, and that's really where where Rand is like, all right, I got, you know, n- now I have to. And so it's almost like he goes and has like a, he tries to explain to him not exactly why he did what he did, but just that he tries to, he tries to make amends a little bit, especially with Perrin and, and tries to get Perrin back in there. And then, you know, Matt's distrusting of everybody and still kind of has some stuff going on with his relationship to Shadar Logoth and the dagger and Mordith and everything. So uh, yeah, there's, there's that, but yeah, now it's, t- it's time though for them to, to basically, you know, go on their way to to retrieve the horn uh, as quickly as possible, and um, so you know, Rand is kind of it, well. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that part. But like, um, there's a Inktar, Inktar, the guy that I like so much, right? He is one of the Sh- the Shinarans who is going to lead this company for Lord Agomar, and he's going to take everyone, and they're going to hunt down the horn, um, and the dagger, and Matt and Perrin are going to go as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, we do we do get the start of their journey um, in, in in chapter 10. Right. Uh, so, you know, the the, the hunt begins because um, chapter nine is where they where they where they all leave. And so uh, as we, you know, all, for this episode, all we all we get to is just kind of the beginning of their journey. And uh, it's bad. Right. Yeah. Uh, we get to a village. Everyone is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and one thing yeah. I, I wanted to ask you. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not good. It's it's uh, the start to this is is really not good at all. Um, and the Shinarans are really like Lord Agilmore. He he was kind of um, he was struggling with the horn being in in his possession. He wanted to blow it. I mean, he wanted the heroes to come again and he wanted to go to war with the shadow because he's 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 a he's you know, he's one of these um bordering countries, like, you know, a border a border mm-hmm. nation and he's like right there and he's been fighting the shadow for his whole life. And so this would be a great tool against the shadow and he just he almost can't hold off. So, yeah, and then for it to be lost is just under his watches devastating so inktar is sent after it and in this group but um they send with them this character uh um i always say it wrong huron 
uh, Huron. Yeah, who's a sniffer. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I think that is so, so cool. So you have now Perrin who has sort of like this old talent or this this thing that um, is well before the yellow eyes and the wolf. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's ancient, almost predating like Age of Legends stuff like this. They don't really know much about it. And then you have Huron, who is also a sniffer and his talent is also really, you know, he it's almost like he can smell death. And and e- in evil in a way, um, and and murder and stuff. So he's kind of like, you know, following this this group, and he is who's kind of leading them. Yeah. So what was, this guy is literally like smelling. I mean, he's like he's like you know, I know. Yeah. It's it's like it's it just shows you like that's what Robert Jordan can do. Well, hey, there's there's this guy, you know, and he can he can smell you know death and 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 decay and things like that. And he just whatever this guy has that talent. Like here we go, and and so you're following him. But yeah. Uh, you get some other cool characters. Masima is in there, who's going to be a big player later on. Um, Uno is in there as well. Uno, yeah, 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 yeah. And Uno, yeah. And so, and, and you know, there is one other kind of artifact uh, that I guess we in, in kind of just finishing up here with with some of the stuff that happens in chapter ten. Um, and we we talked about it before is you go all the way back right to to book one and we're talking about why does tam have this sword yeah yes. well and i was like you know i don't know there's something about the sword right mm-hmm. well okay we've learned a lot more about the sword right there's definitely i don't know that we know everything about it yet but we definitely know there's still something more uh about that sword it keeps coming up should we sell it should we not you could make a lot of money well it looks like it belongs with him um you know and that's that comes up quite a bit in this um yeah, Uno and Masimo, you kind of look at Rand and they they say, you know, have you earned the heron on that? Right? right. It's, it's it's some it's a it's like a sign of you know, honor. Have you have you earned it? Right with that with that sword. They keep talking. They keep saying that Rand is Aiel and he protests that he's not. You know, I'm from the two rivers, uh, and so again, so we still haven't figured out all of the secrets of the sword but it is something we've learned we've learned more about too even when they're talking about the prophecies they kind of talk about they, they mentioned it a couple times yes yeah exactly exactly uh yeah and, and just so folks i think people are maybe wondering uh at the end of chapter 10 we're going to talk about that last village and the trap that is laid for rand and really what happens you know there so we're going to go in that into our, in our extended edition but yeah as, as you're focused on the sword mm-hmm. here i mean land kind of says that it is a uh, it, you know uh, that when you see somebody with a sword like this and they don't know that it was created by the one power and in like basically like that's something that that the Aes Sedai won't do that anymore by the way and that's something that they 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 will not make these special weapons these were things that were done long ago and when you like you can't sharpen that sword remember you noticed when he was like cutting uh firewood or whatever he was he was where, where was he at he was um right it was when they were attacked uh the right yeah and it was just noticing that the blade doesn't dull and it's there's something special. It's not just even the heron mark that that you're a blade master. It's it's that it's uh, Lance says it's it's even more special than that. You know, it's it has it's been created with the one power. There's no re- there, you'll never have to sharpen that sword. Uh, you don't you know, on, on a wedding stone or anything. Nothing. So. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Lan, lan, yeah. Let me let me pull it up here. Land says something. He says, you know, most most come from bladesmiths, uh, the finest deal men can make. Yet some rot by a man's hand. But that one, sheep herder, that one could tell a tale of three thousand years or more. <laughs> yeah. Right. What? You know, like, I mean, where did he get this sword? So. Right. Yeah. Where did Tam get it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that's that's a story for another time. But it's. um. It's really cool, and that's it's something throughout the entire first book he had to deal with people seeing it. He puts the wrappings, you know, the red wrapping, the uh, cloth on it, um, on on the hilt, and going forward, yeah. Now you have the Shinarans who are kind of looking at him, going like, "Wait!" So he's actually even with Land trying to become worthy of the sword. And one thing that uh, Land mentions to him is is knowing when to sheathe the sword, and it's like he he goes over all these really cool moves. Um, you, you know, like like there's there's titles for them, um, and, and he's he's showing him. I think it's in the, it's in the first chapter where they talk about all the different things you, that, that he's taught him, and so he's making him worthy of that sword, if you will. So which is which is yeah, it's a cool. right. You get to be a blade master or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's so it's it's twofold. Yeah. It's he's helping him just you know clear his mind, and he's also helping him you know kind of um, just you know and be worthy of the sword in case someone were to challenge him or something, you know, I think it's important that he know how to use it. So, yeah. 
All right. Well, um, uh, we're going to exp- talk a little bit more about chapter the end of chapter ten in our extended edition. But as uh, do we have any uh, any messages we want to yeah. read here? Yeah, just some things you know from. Um, from some of our friends over on on Patreon, and again, those those polls are anybody can go in there. Um, like the discussion threads are open to everyone and and public, so you guys can go in there and, and uh, converse and stuff. But, um, yeah, so so just a few things, and I think it's always good to kind of comb back through things we've discussed and, and think about these different uh, individuals. At the end of the last book, we actually fought the Forsaken, you know, and like yeah. Lady Heather is talking about just Nynaeve being attacked by Agenor. And Balthamel and and just the idea that you know they said you know I have almost forgotten the pleasures of the flesh, but Balthamel remembers them and so like they're just ancient they're so old they've been trapped in that in that prison and um, was it did we do this on the podcast or was I just talking to you about my glacier example and being frozen in the dark ones prison? I think we were just talking, was that just I, us talking? Can't remember. I think we were just I think we were just talking okay okay about, I, like a t- an iceberg yeah yeah I couldn't remember so. You know, like a lot of people will ask, like, how is it that that these guys, why aren't all the, like, well, I think the question is, are all the forsaken out? Why only these two, you know? And and so it's like, it's it's just nuts to kind of think that these guys were closest to the edge of that prison. And remember that in the in these chapters, um, Moraine gave to Suan one of the seals. You know, the Omerlin is the is supposed to be the guardian you know, uh, over the seven seals, the dark one that sealed the dark one's prison, um, Quindiar. And she, you know, like, like it, the, the, what you find out in these chapters is that the Omerlin seat has no flipping clue where they're at. <laughs> like it's supposed to be the guardian over these things. And, and like over the years, they've either been stolen or taken or, um, hidden away and, and, and stuff. So, uh, Moraine realizes when she has that, uh, Heartstone that, you know, it's one of the seals and that it is broken. And so that releases some of these, you know, individuals out into the pattern. Um, but yeah, Lady Heather just kind of goes on to talk about just how, how intense that scene is. And then, and then to think that like the, the way he is, um, looking at those girls is just very disturbing. And you think about the show a little bit, right. And maybe what, what, how they, how they could portray that and just really make these forsaken next level scary. I mean, nightmare level scary is I think what they, what they may try to do with all of that. So, um, let's see, Nicole Whitaker, uh, our friend, uh, was able to finally catch up. She said she finally caught up and she's glad that she was able, able to, um, you know, close out the first book, and before starting the second, um, she wanted to say that she really loves this book and and feels that it's one of the best, the first books in the series um, out there. So, like, you know, basically we're in the, in, the, in the Great Hunt and that it's one of the best books. And she was excited for Sir Matt to kind of, you know, continue on. Um, she said that she really enjoys the conversation we have. That's great. Thank you. Um, and let's see. Yeah, the, the interchangeable use of names versus titles such as Lan uh, and the Warder and Nynaeve and the Wisdom and uh, Moraine uh, and the Aes Sedai. So remember you brought that up uh, and just we're talking about the what Robert Jordan's writing style and how neat that maybe sometimes, you know, he's, he, we're using our names versus our titles. And is that like, you know, which hat are we wearing, you know, when we're speaking to people? Is it my teacher hat, my coach's hat, uh, podcasting hat? Is it is it just you and me being buddies? You know, that kind of thing. Right. So, thinking that was pretty cool. Um, let's see. Yes. And then, uh, Lady Amanda also, uh, thought that conversation was, was interesting as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. So just a few comments there. Let me see on the extended edition. Yeah. Just more talking about, um, that's where I brought up. Yeah. I already brought that up with, uh, Lan and Nynaeve. Uh, someone made a comparison to Aragorn and, and Arwen actually. And I'm always looking for the Tolkien connections and Sir David. Yeah. Made yeah. Like a, it, oh, it, it is definitely similar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because, because we, we compare him to Aragorn and, and he's right. Very similar. Yeah. yeah that king who, uh, you know, without a kingdom, if you will. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's more similar there than she is to. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So just a few comments. I mean, there's some other ones on here where they kind of talk some spoiler stuff and, and things, uh, which, which is again, I, I totally am all for, I, I want everyone to continue those conversations and I love to get in there as well and, and converse and talk about, you know, things to come in this book and, and everything. So, you know, Sir Matt is essentially, I mean, like the day that we record these, I mean, like a couple of days before he's finished. So this is like fresh and we just, we just go after it. So 
I think that's yeah. The it's best a, way. this this book feels like it's going to be a sprint. Uh, <laughs> to be to be you know the the last book the last book it's like okay first ten chapters all right okay we're here we are we're learning everything then it's like okay slows down a little bit okay picks up a little bit slows down and then just a dead sprint now I feel like how this this uh, that's how this book and that's how everyone's exp- um, described it to me it's like once you hit the end of the first book you're just right you're sprinting until about book eight yeah yeah it's like okay yeah. Um, okay, so now on to um, just some of our predictions to get to foretelling here. And we talked about, um, I think it's Elida, who has sort of the gift of foretelling in, in these chapters and went to Tarvalin to tell the Amarlin Sea, who then uses the winds to push them all the way down, um, uh, you know, over to far do- um, to, to random Moraine, um, it, you know, just to kind of get there quickly. So you already kind of gave a prediction, um, but I wondered if you just, you know, could elaborate on it more. You said something like Pot on Fane might be uh taking the yeah horn. i mean is he is yeah is he i think maybe he's going to Ilion. i mean if that's where they're that's where they were thinking they were going to go i mean you know maybe he can trick more people into becoming into becoming dark friends right i mean mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah raise like a raise a false banner or something yeah yeah okay 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 so that's him you know um i, I guess uh just to kind of get a little more out of that like do you think how do you think the pursuit is going to go because we know that they're they're on this hunt and we've got the sniffer and he's yeah you know. i mean i well i guess i just i guess i just don't know how uh, i'm trying to think of like you know can he travel in ways that the other people can't um okay you know, I, I that 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 that, that i'm un, un, unsure of but certainly um i mean i think it's going to be like the majority of the book if the book is the great hunt then it's probably going to be like the majority of the book is them them chasing after him yeah yeah gotcha okay yeah yeah, I just kind of wondered, like, is there any, do, do you think we'll see, because when they leave, um, again, Moraine is leaving them alone, and there are no Aes Sedai uh, who, who go with them at this point. Well, and I think I think part of that is that, you know, if you true, maybe if you truly believe in the pattern and, and the way the wheel's supposed to go, that, you know, that's that's sometimes where I, I'm thinking about this series, and I'm like, well, hold on a second, like, could Rand actually ever, could Rand be killed, right, if... He's Tavirin, and the pattern is supposed is supposed to go a certain way. Then, yeah, does it matter? What does he have the free will? I yeah, Rand just yeah. like kill himself, right, you know. Right, and right. so it's kind of like I think maybe it's almost like they're they're so strong in their beliefs that they're like, well, mm. it doesn't. He he, we can't control him. Yeah, I, we have to let him do his own thing and kind of believe in our our vision of what we think will happen it, it, yeah and i love that and actually i maybe uh, in the in the discussion throw we can talk more about it you know like there is a balance between sort of fate and, and free will and stuff and it's something that robert jordan challenges people with in, in his writing it also even comes down to just who the characters are and what they believe in the story too you know like what what do they believe and as you say if maureen and them just sort of believe you know that that, that you know she's she or he is a part of the pattern, or that the wheel weaves as the wheel wills. You know, does that mean? And again, you have to go back to the conversation with loyal and Tavirian, and and can you, you know, create your own path and destiny and different things like that, and 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 whatever. I mean, it's just it's all kind of kind of fascinating because that that's sort of the great one of the great debates out of all of this. So yeah, I'd love to get people's you know, thoughts on that and, and everything like, yeah, could he be gentled? And one of the, th- I told you like, there's going to, there's, there comes a point, I think it's in this next part. Um, maybe it's part three, but it, it, one of the two where Rand kind of comes across a situation and actually it's similar to the trap that we have here at the end of chapter 10, but it's, it's later on. And he gets in a situation where like, he's going to see many possibilities and that's all I'll say. And it's just like it's like there's some crazy stuff that happens to him where he's he learns a lot, you know, about I guess I guess the the wheel of time and the pattern itself and what could be what you know what what is what is reality the whole thing. So it's fascinating and will be answered more later. I guess. Awesome. So yeah awesome okay all right well as and i we uh we still have we'll still again we're going to cover some of that uh chapter end of chapter 10 stuff in our uh extended uh edition but with that we want to thank you for answering the call in our next episode we will be discussing the great hunt 
chapters 11 through 19 uh, in our extended edition we'll be covering um you know the end of the end of chapter chapter 10 and some some more with padan fane if you like our podcast don't forget to subscribe like us write a review leave a comment or send us a message at the horn of Valir at gmail.com we will see you soon and remember that the grave is no bar to our call